still with me? All right. Today, the word geek has been adopted by the general populace. Everybody knows who Iron Man is. We got little kids running around wearing rocket raccoon t-shirts. And some people think that Wakanda is an actual African country. <laughs> Geekdom has gone mainstream. Uh, Star Wars movies are making a billion dollars every year, except for Han Solo. <laughs> Marvel is picking our pockets clean with their immensely popular Marvel Cinematic Universe. Has anyone seen Avengers Infinity War? <laughs> it is only the fourth movie in history to crack the $2 billion mark worldwide. Gaming is bigger than ever, manga is bigger than ever, anime is bigger than ever. I repeat, Geekdom has gone mainstream. It has entered the general zeitgeist, and it is here to stay. But what does that mean for people like me? What does it mean for people who liked all of this stuff before it was ever cool? So to answer this question, we're going to look at this through my perspective, which is the perspective of comic books and the rise of comic book movies. Now, I grew up in the early 90s and the 2000s. Um, there weren't a lot of comic book movies back then. I was always into nerdy things, uh, science fiction, video games, but mostly I was into comic books. Um, now, I got teased in school, but not that much. And the reason I didn't get teased all that much was because the general population was getting slowly introduced to the concept of comic books through movies. Movies like Tim Burton's Batman, Blade in 1998, X-Men in 2000. So these movies slowly made the concept of comic books more palatable to everyday folks. Now, everything changed for me and on September 3rd, um, no, what, September 3rd, May 3rd, 2002. That is the day that the first Spider-Man movie came out. Now, I remember that day very well. I was studying clearly, as I said, September 3rd. Um, I was studying for a history final with my best friend, and we decided to take a break to go watch the first Spider-Man movie. Now, not only did that movie change my life, it changed the movie industry forever. It made so much money that every major studio decided that the only way that they could make that much money was to make comic book movies. And boy, did they make comic book movies. So in the early 2000s, we got a wave of comics, of, of comic book-based adaptations. Most of them were garbage, like Daredevil, Fantastic Four, Elektra, if you guys remember those. But from time to time, we get a masterpiece like Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight in 2008. Now today, we live in an entirely different way of time. In 2008, Marvel launched their very own movie studio and shared cinematic universe, where different characters could meet up with one another in different movies and make these big ensemble epics like The Avengers. That only happens in comics normally. And in 2012, Marvel released the first Avengers movie. Um, which was a phenomenon and again it changed the movie industry forever. Now, every single major studio wants their own shared cinematic universe. DC tried it, they released Justice League just a few months ago. Didn't turn out very well. <laughs> since then, since 2008, Marvel has released 20 movies in 10 years and they're all becoming more and more successful. Now, that is creating an insane appetite. And we're only talking about movies right now, but there's also an insane amount of TV shows. Um, and we can look at a little bit of data. So since tomorrow, so in 1998, if you see that, you can see the upwards trajectory. In 1998, we only had two superhero movies. We had Blade, and we had Zorro. I know Zorro doesn't technically count, but he inspired Batman, so I'm giving him a pass. Let's say two movies in 1998. Flash forward 10 years to 2008, that number went up to six movies, five to six movies. That's almost double. At 10 years to that, in 2018, we just had nine comic book movies released in 2018 alone. They're going to be released, there's a couple more left. It was actually going to be 11, but Fox postponed two X-Men movies to 2019, so they made my point less attractive, but you know what I'm trying to say. They're basically doubling every 10 years. Um, let's not even get into uh, the TV shows. Everyone's got a TV show. I can, I can spend the next 10 minutes list listing them off. But what that said, what, the, the amount of comic book movies on television have actually led to a boost in sales for comic books. Comic book sales have been on the decline since the crash in 1993. But if you look at the trajectory starting in 2011 and 2015, it's back on the uptick. So comic books are selling again. So what that tells me is that this stuff is working. These movies and t television shows are getting people interested in the original source material that gave life to these characters in the first place. 
So average people are getting introduced to legendary artists like Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Alex Ross, legendary comic book writers like Stan Lee, Alan Moore, Frank Miller. They're the best kind of advertisement that these properties can hope for. Um, but has it become too easy? Is the word geek being thrown around too liberally, for example? Um, being a geek, it was very different back in the day. To be a geek, you had to earn it. Nowadays, it seems a little bit easy. Right? So I'm going to give an example of uh, a music band, for example. So how is someone like me reacting to this whole situation? Right? I've been liking this stuff my whole life. All of a sudden, everyone loves it. It's cool. It's, it's Call of Duty. It's Coca-Cola. Well, we've all had this band that we liked. Right? I'm sure an obscure band that not a lot of people knew. Then all of a sudden their music becomes really popular. It's played on every radio. It's the song that everyone is humming along to. Well then all of a sudden that band that you liked doesn't seem that cool anymore, does it? It's kind of lame when your mom is humming to like Kings of Leon. You're like, all right. So that is kind of what, that's what these are going through today. That thing that we liked is kind of in secret has gone mainstream. It's the song that everyone is humming along to. So, how does someone like me view it? Well, you have old school geeks who sometimes like to build walls. But they think that in order to be a geek, you need to show some credibility. You have to be patient, because being a geek back in the day meant being patient. It meant waiting years and years to get a single movie. We had to make sacrifices. The word geek itself was used as an insult. Now it's a term of endearment that we throw around. The guy, he's a geek, he's such a geek, it's so cute. Not back in the day. So some of us are having a hard time coping with that change. But should we show so much resistance to change? Do we need to build walls? Do we need to create a distinction between a casual geek and a hardcore geek? I think the answer is a definite no. Because as someone who has loved these characters my entire life, I want them to succeed. I want these characters that I've spent my entire childhood worshiping to find the largest audience possible. And if I just stand in the way, because people who've spent less time liking these characters than I do, then I'm not really helping at all. Um, to quote John Schnepp, the late great king of the sweaties, we live in the golden age of comic book movies and television. We're actually getting so much content thrown our way that people are complaining about how many superhero movies we're getting. Every single day I see an article where the word superhero fatigue is thrown around. And movie pundits are more than happy to blame the steady demise of American cinema on comic book movies. I think that is absolutely insane. And if you were to go back in time and tell the 11 year old me that in 20 years we're going to be complaining about too many comic book movies, I'd tell you you're completely insane. But that is the world we're living in. What geeks like me need to understand is that that these characters do not belong to us. They belong to the world. And by standing in the way, we're not really helping. And there's also one question that I, that I want to answer that I feel, think is very important. Why are average people that into comic book movies? Why are, why are these people all of a sudden so willing to embrace these characters that didn't seem that cool a long time ago? And I think it goes back to the core of these characters. For example, my favorite character has always been Spider-Man. Now, I'd be lying if I told you that his superpowers weren't insanely cool, and that I spend half of every day imagining myself swinging through New York City. But that's not really what makes Spider-Man cool. What makes Spider-Man cool is the human story. He's a skinny, nerdy kid, he's kind of shy and awkward, like myself, not very good at talking to girls, he's not rich, he's not invincible, he has a hard time balancing his life with being Spider-Man. It's kind of relatable. What about Superman? He's an invincible alien. Well, sure, you can look at it that way. Or you can look at it as the story of an outsider trying to fit in to a world where he doesn't belong. That makes it a little bit more relatable. What about the X-Men? They're just a bunch of weirdos with weird superpowers. Yeah, true. Or they're a group of outcasts. They are a persecuted minority hiding, too afraid of humanity to reveal their true selves. That's also a little bit more relatable, isn't it? So, what I'm trying to say is that 
these characters that we've loved and held on to so tightly for so many years, they don't belong to me. They belong to the world. And um, if I truly want these characters to succeed, I need to, I can't be selfish and I have to let go of them. To quote Master Yoda from the horrible Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. No, they highly advise me not to do the voice, so no voice. But you need to train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. In other words, if you really love something, sometimes you gotta let it go. Thank y'all.